Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to APC EM Sunday worship. Call to worship this afternoon is taken uh, from Psalm 121. Let's read together. It's from uh, on your screen as well. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Father God, Lord, thank you for saying. God, may we, Lord, just focus on just your absolute power, God, authority, the kingdom that is here today. God, you're so mighty. Only you, God, are mighty to save. You, Lord, deserve all the honor and all the praise and all the glory. Just name for Amen. It's a torture. Two, three.
shine your light and let the whole world see. Singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. Singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. Heroes and conquer the grave. Jesus conquer the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Well, this next song, I don't know if you guys remember, we did this song uh, when we were doing Zoom worship you know, last year. But uh, I was kind of reminded of the song uh, during DLT where you know, when it comes to salvation, you know, and living life in Christ, it's pretty much a, a journey. Our hope is that when we meet Jesus Christ, God, that he'll say, well done, good and faithful one. What will it be like when my pain is gone? All the worries of this world just fade away. When you call my name Not the moment when I see you face to face Waiting my whole life to hear you say Well done, well done The good and faithful one Welcome to the place where you belong Tears are washed away Every broken thing 
God, until we want to see you, God, may our eyes be fixed on heaven, God. Until we live this life, may we look to you for guidance and help. Let your word, Lord, be a light to our feet, God. God, I look to you. Where am I? 
next second or next next moment 
Holy God, only you hold us in the palm of your hands. So we look to you. May we be, Lord, just utterly dependent on you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, welcome, everyone. Glad that um, uh, you'll be able to join in uh, this afternoon. Um, a few announcements. Uh, same, uh, this weekly uh, ministry uh, continues. Uh, Tuesday, uh, DLT, uh, doing live together. We meet over Zoom, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Uh, join us uh, for uh, Bible study. Uh, we uh, chose a book, a gospel, other kingdom. So we're going to continue on with uh, chapter four. And we're going to have a um, fellowship this coming Thursday over uh, lunch at 1230 to uh, 130 at church. Join us if you have uh, time. Yeah, with that being said, let's um, pray together. Father God, We love your presence. In and among our worship of God, we sense your presence. We sense your delight. We feel your embrace and your love of God. Thank you, Father, for being strong and for us. Thank you, Father, for being the reigning and over us all, God, even over our nation and over our generation, over our world. Father, thank you for our reigning on us, O oh Lord. We want to continually look to you, Father. Would you help us that we may have our, our eyes of our circumstance? of the things around, the people around, but help us to gaze our eyes on you. Give us ears to hear your very word speaking over us and speaking to us this afternoon, O oh God. Holy Spirit of God, in which you have your righteous way and way of Christ with us and among us, O oh God. We continue to look to you, Father. May your kingdom come. Your will be done in this hour, this moment, as it is in heaven. Do whatever you wish to do among us, O Lord. We love you this day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you have a Bible with you, let's turn to Philippians. Book of Philippians. We're going to pick up from uh, chapter 3, verse 1, 3, 1 through 11. Philippians 3, 1 through 11. Just read along you know, on the screen and with your Bible. Philippians 3, 1. Father, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evil doors, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by His Spirit, we boast in Christ Jesus, and who boasts in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, the people of Israel, or the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness, based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage 
that I may gain Christ and be bound in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings and becoming like him in his death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Amen. I want us to love a joy-filled life this year, a joy-filled life this year. I know it is hard to remain joyful in this uh, pandemic. And I was talking with uh, two of our guys last Thursday. I asked them, isn't it hard to stay at home? Isn't it hard to stay at home? Not being able to uh, freely go places. Uh, we have uh, been uh, social distancing almost a year now almost a year now. Can you believe it? And, you know, we feel it, and you feel it, and I feel it. Of course, it's hard, and it's, it's hard. It's tough. Uh, it's not uh, easy. But in this letter of Paul and Philippians, and we see so much of uh, Paul's uh, joy, so much of his joy. I don't think it is by coincidence that we are in this letter. We are studying this letter, and we've been studying from um, chapter 1. And this letter is filled with the word joy, or rejoice, or the glad. And from beginning to the end, this letter has so much, it's filled with so much of Paul's joy. And Paul is rejoicing in prison. If you recall, he's rejoicing in prison, in his confinement, in his quarantine. And much worse than what you and I experienced. Yes, we've been social distancing, and some, somehow, somewhat, and staying at home, a kind of base, and we've been living like this for about a year. But Paul's condition is much worse than what we are experiencing, right? But he's saying again and again, rejoice, rejoice with me, I'm glad, be glad with me, and in our text, rejoice in the Lord, in the Lord. And we may ask, we may wonder, how could you be so joyful in prison, in isolation? But we find his secret in our text. A secret of his contentment, a secret of his joy in our text. You know, we all live for something or someone. And you turn on the radio and you hear so many love songs. And we love for that as someone as special, someone special. You know, Valentine's Day is coming, right? And we live for that special somebody. And we just, just hear of so many love songs and radio stations going to go bankrupt. There will be no uh, Korean dramas without really speaking about, talking about love. But Paul's joy, the secret of his joy is in the person of Jesus Christ. It's in the person of Jesus Christ. From uh, verse 4 of our text to 11 of our text, and Paul is talking about himself, and we get to see, hear, and know so much about him, about him, the person, Paul. Even his joy of living, and we find in our, our text. You see, our faith is great, our faith is great because the object of our faith is great. Because the person of our faith, of our trust, is great, isn't it? And if we put our confidence in uh, this chair, then our faith is as worthy as this chair, right? This chair will hold me tight, you know, when I sit on this. It's not going to break on me. It's, it's going to hold me still. 
And Paul's joy comes from the object of his love, the living, the risen person of Jesus Christ, his Lord, his Lord. This joy is coming from that. You see, we wouldn't know this unless we experienced it ourselves. You know, my parents thought that I went crazy. Man, this guy, I, I sent, um, we sent this son to this retreat, but he came back, gone crazy. <laughs> that was uh, 28 years ago. Well, you know, when you know, my parents came to know their Lord, know the Lord, Man, I thought my mom went crazy. They became just radical followers of Christ. You don't know this you, unless you taste, just taste on your own, taste by yourself and how awesome, how great the object, the person of our trust is. In our home, we experience so much healing and reconciliation. That's all because of Christ. We experience revival after revival at home. At home. We experience, witness so much of healing and reconciliation among our parents. Even my relationship with my parents, we, we experience so much of Christ, so much of Christ, so much of His joy. You know, you may say, and then we read um, this letter, uh, our text, man, what Paul is saying is so hard. It's hard stuff. I consider everything a loss, you know, garbage for the sake of gaining Christ. This is hard stuff. I want to know Christ, participating in his suffering and and I'm joining in his death and uh, so that I may somehow attain the resurrection from the dead. And this is hard stuff, but difficult things. But not if we experienced him uh, personally in our lives. And uh, this he talk and sings, uh, Jesus freak, right? Jesus freak. But you can't help it. We can't help but to sing a uh, Jesus freak. You see, in the Paul's life, and then we um, can be divided to his uh, BC days and his AD days and his BCs, uh, the life before, days before he met Christ personally, and his AD days, uh, his life after he met Christ. We often formulate our own testimony like this, right? And before we go on a mission and just, uh, I uh, give, um, the mission team, uh, the assignment, and come up with uh, your uh, te- one-page testimony. And then they give this instruction, and they just write down. If it's hard for you to come up with your own testimony, write down your BC and your AD, and the, your life before Christ, and what happened when you received Christ, and talk about your life after you met on Christ. That's how we formulate uh, our testimony. And uh, before uh, Paul met Christ in our text, and we can uh, just... We can speculate his life was consisted in and gaining and earning his own credentials and building his own resume. That's, that's his life. That was his life before he met Christ. And he was doing really well at that. Now listen to Paul here, verses 4, 5, and 6. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Listen to him. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee. Verse 6, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. That was his confidence. If we read him again in message, you know my uh, pedigree or legitimate birth, circumcised on the eighth day, an Israelite from the elite tribe of Benjamin, a strict and devout adherent to God's law, 
a fiery defender of the purity of my religion, even to the point of persecuting the church, a meticulous observer of everything set down in God's law, a bug. You know, one theologian put it, Paul had natural pride in his Jewish attainments. And he was, listen to him, he was the star of hope for Gamaliel and the Sanhedrin. Gamaliel was a renowned teacher. And he was the star of hope for Gamaliel, his teacher. And the Sanhedrin was the highest ruling body in Israel. And he was the star of hope for Sanhedrin. His future can be brighter than this. Everything was going for him. But not until, but not after he met Christ. Not after he met Christ. Let me show you how he met Christ, the turning point of his life, turning point of his life. And as, as we read and just Acts 9 and 1 through 6, I'm going to just read to you. And just as, as you read alone or listen, consider your own turning point of your life. Consider the way that Christ uh, the touches you at the first time. How Christ came into your life. How Christ made difference in your own life. Acts 9 verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul, meaning Paul, was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. When we just get there, there's no joy in that kind of spirit, right? In that kind of heart. Breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. You see, Paul explains uh, this experience of encountering Christ like this in 1 Corinthians 15, 7 and 8. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. He's talking about the resurrecting Lord meeting James and appearing to the disciples after he rose again from the grave. And then he went on by saying, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. So what is Paul saying? I saw the risen Christ. I saw the reason Christ myself. Reason Christ appeared to me also. Can you imagine reason Lord appearing to you personally? You are seeing him face to face and he's talking to you and yet he's not rebuking you. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? There's so much compassion in his voice. You'll be told what you must do. And, and believing him enough, right, and to give him that special assignment. Man, I saw the risen Lord on myself. They, that was a turning point of his life. Is now rebuking, ever so patient with me, and trusting me enough to uh, give me his assignment, and everything changes at that moment. Everything changes. He's giving you that assignment, and your game plan must change, and your goal setting changes. But I'd rather have Christ changes my goal every time than holding on to the goal that is so perishing, that is so temporary and fleeting, that is only momentary, right? 
He's giving me a better job assignment. Don't just love as a fisherman, be a fisher of mankind. I want to make you a fisher of mankind. So much greater, right? And Christ came and met a bunch of fishermen in Galilee, and they were changed. And Christ came into your life, and you were changed. We all met Christ that way. Listen to Paul again and how, how much in Christ man to Paul. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, he says later, later than uh, the Philippian here, and at the end of his life, and he's talking to his spiritual son, uh, Timothy, like this, 1 Timothy 1, 15. Here is a saying that you can rely on, and nobody should doubt that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I myself am the greatest of them. Greatest of them. And I be put it, I, of whom I am the worst. Of whom I am the worst. Another translation, I am the chief. I am the chief sinner. But how can you not love him back with everything, right? When Christ touches you like that. And Paul said, he is my righteousness in verse, uh, verse 9. He is my righteousness. If you read along here, verse 9, and be found in him. I want to be found in him, he said, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of a faith. Paul said his worth and Christ's worth in my life is God's righteousness. It's God's righteousness for me. I want to be found in Him. I want to be found in Him. That is a secret of Paul's joy. Secret of Paul's joy. Being found in Christ. Being found in Christ. God's righteousness and for you and for me. That's our joy. And Paul then goes further here, verse 10 and 11. If you can get there, 10 and 11. Paul says this, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection, the secret of Paul's joy here, the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings and becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. That was Paul's joy, verse 10 and 11. The reason that his confinement in prison can take away his joy, the reason that his change, his chains, the his chains can steal his joy, the reason that he can continue on rejoicing is that simple. He saw, according to verse 10 and 11, his sufferings as ways to know Christ better. And can we approach in 2021 20, uh, in that way, like being so mature in our mind, you know, in our relationship to Christ, and uh, God's not going to waste any suffering, any pain, any tear, and through them all, I'm going to get to know Christ better. That's what Paul is saying. He says, I want to know Christ to know the participation in his sufferings. Yeah? Participation in his sufferings or fellowship in his uh, sufferings. You know, I was reminded of Acts uh, 9 and 15 and 16 as I was just meditating on that, the suffering, joining in uh, with Christ's suffering. You see, uh, Jesus said to Ananias, right? Jesus appeared to Ananias as he was praying in a vision to Go to this guy, Saul, and uh, lay your hand on him, and he's praying, and, uh, and uh, have, him, have his eyes open and uh, uh, baptize him, and God is giving him the assignment. As he was saying, he's saying this, Acts 9, 15, and 16, But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. And get this, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Uh, my suffering is the suffering for my Lord. 
suffering for His name, His sake. No, it is His suffering that I am partaking in. There was a reason for His rejoicing in prison. I'm sure Paul was never forgotten of what Jesus Christ Himself said to him when He appeared to him. Right? Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? I never persecute you. Right? I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting. And Jesus was identifying a church's pain as his own pain. I'm sure Paul was thinking, if I die even in this prison, verse 10, and becoming like him in his death, that's, that's what I want to want to experience. I want to become like him in his uh, death. And verse 11 says, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. I want to know Christ as know the power of his resurrection. And if you live in that way, what will really shake you, right? Man, he's just living just Beyond, beyond his circumstance, he, he wasn't even like afraid of suffering, or of dying. And Christ went through them all. I want to experience full on. Calm suffering on my way. I want to get to know Christ better. Oh, man. Dying, I'm not afraid. You remember last week? Dying is gain, he said, which is better by far. Dying is gain, it's profit. You have the principal amount and then you get the interest and then you have so much more. I have so much more if I die, you know, you know living for Christ. Dying is, is no longer an issue. A fear. I have to die once, you see. I have to die once to attain to the resurrection from the dead to somehow experience the power of resurrection in my own life. I'm not afraid of dying. I believe in 2021, in this pandemic, God is raising up with disciples with this kind of vision. As we pray, Lord, give us vision to see what you see. Give, help us to believe, you know, this, this core message of the gospel. Jesus defeated sin and death, and the reason Christ is with us. And Paul is saying, I want to join him in whatever I do, whatever I experience and go through in life. Right? I, I want to get, I want to know Christ. I can know Christ better. You see that commitment? You know, Jesus Christ and he gave this parable, and it was so applicable to uh, this text because Apostle Paul then lived like this. In Matthew 13, 44, 46, and Jesus said this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on, on the lookout for a choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Jesus is that hidden treasure. Jesus is that pearl of great value. How could he not? He defeated sin and then he overcame death. And I saw the reason Christ and giving me the assignment that lasts forever, that endures. The Paul's joy is here. And even verse 7, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, verse 8, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Here he says, I consider them the garbage. It literally means dung, animals, poop. I go uh, just walk scout a dog. I always take his poop bag. It's any minute he's going to poo. I don't want to touch it with my bare hand. 
Whenever he pulls, I just pick them up, that smelly pool, and carry them in a bag until I come home. He smells. And the tiny dog's poop smells. You know, Apostle Paul is not being, being just a negative here. Because later in, the, in this letter, and then we're going to get there in chapter 4, he says, in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. He's not being negative, but compared to surpassing worth, that infinite great value, great worth of knowing Christ, everything else, it's like garbage comparing to Christ. That is, everything else is like scout's poop. You know, Jim Elliot was right when he said, he is no fool who gives, who loses what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Again, he is no fool. She is no fool who loses what he or she cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. I cannot lose life, right? Life of Christ, right? There was the joy of Paul. The joy of Paul. His joy it was not really dependent on the circumstance. He lived beyond the dictionary definition of joy. His, his worth, his joy is in the person of Christ. The risen Christ. Think about the risen Christ. Let me close with this. You know, one the well-known pastor, well, well-known pastor, as his mentor, pastor, his spiritual father. This well-known pastor's spiritual father, mentor, pastor. So he's great, right? <laughs> While he was still alive, and he said, "What would you say to young you who just begun in ministry as as the old you?" And he simply said, stay the course. Stay the course. And Paul is saying here in this letter, keep the joy. Keep the joy. Rejoice in the Lord and keep it that way in 2021. Rejoice in the Lord no matter what happens, right? And Christ overcame, right? Christ is with you. Christ is holding your life. You are living because then he has a great assignment for your life. And rejoice in that. Rejoice in the Lord. Keep it that way. It's safe that way. It's safe for you. Because in verse 1, Father, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. It is a safeguard for you. It is safe for you. Let's keep it that way this year. Amen? Let's keep it that way this year. Keep our treasure, our treasure. Let's keep our treasure, our treasure. I mean, we know and we feel and we understand and we value Christ uh, just, just like uh, Paul values here. Let's keep our treasure, our treasure. Our joy is in Him. And I keep our joy, our joy. It's Christ, Christ our Lord. Christ our Lord. Let's pray together. Father God, we are grateful that Christ is unchanging in our lives. And no matter what happens, what come, what may come in our ways, how uncertain our future is, Christ is risen from the dead. Oh God, can we, may we, Lord, have the perspective of a poor God. I want to know Christ. Even in this pandemic, I will, I'm going to get to know Christ better through my suffering. I'm going to rejoice in that. I want to participate. I want to die like him. So somehow I may also attain the resurrection from the dead. I want to experience the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. And Christ is holding our lives. Our lives is in his hand. Our life is in His hand. 
And God, our life is so secure, living or dying is so secure in you, Lord Jesus Christ. Would you help us to get to know you better? Like Apostle Paul's aim here. And God, would you help us aim at that? You are our greatest treasure in our lives. Would you help us to focus in on you, in loving you, in joining in you, even in our suffering, joining in you and your suffering, God, in our generation, in our time. Help us to join in you, God, in our suffering, in our suffering, God. And God, and help us to just wait upon, Lord God, the day that we're going to uh, finally experience the power of your resurrection. Even those who died and got in you and never, Lord God, and uh, was defeated. It wasn't a waste. And it was gain. So would you help us to live with that perspective, God? Oh God, would you grant the joy back in our lives? Would you help us to gain and Christ back, Lord God, and, and help us to see everything, Lord God, in the eyes of Christ, God, in our lives, God, in our walk with you. And we need so much of you, God. As we are just continually pray, can we pray just a few seconds, uh, praying for our nation? Lord Jesus, we need you in our nation. In Christ, we need you being the center of our joy. The center of our just treasure. Would you be our treasure? Would you be our joy? And God, and would you be in the center of this nation, Lord Jesus Christ? And can we just pray over our nation just, uh, just a few uh, more seconds? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we uh, commit, Lord, this uh, nation, Lord God, and to uh, your good hand, God, and our homes in our nation to your good hand, God. And God, and uh, your word is true. Your word is immovable, Lord God. Your word is, like unfailing, Lord. And Christ, you have risen from the grave and help us to put our, our trust and our hope as nation not over, not on the things that are failing, not on the, uh, the systems that are not perfect that help us to put our hope in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ and who is eternal, who is living, who has defeated the sin and death for us. Help us to find our joy as nation, God, in Christ and Him alone. Help us put our trust in you, Lord Christ. Lord Jesus, we love you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh
曲里。Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Heavenly Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>